Okay guys, so yeah, we've got a bit of an early morning here this morning. Oh, seven degrees Celsius. It is getting cool in the morning. So we are in the truck ready to head on out of here. But first, first we are low on fuel and we need fuel in our jugs that are on back of the truck. So let's head to the gas station and get some diesel. I do not, I do not have a slip tank on this truck and I don't think I'm going to because with that little mini, uh, you know, jugs work pretty, you know, pretty good. Typically, I'm not really on huge jobs with that, with that machine. Usually, you know, two, three day jobs at the most. So jugs do the job pretty well and I don't really want to tie up the bed space. I love having the bed space back there and being able to have the tonal cover back there is nice to keep everything out of, out of the weather. You know, I don't have to mount a toolbox back there. I don't like filling my trucks full of snow in the winter time with the uh, cover it keeps it off. But let's go fill this thing up and fuel up the jugs. Can't get a coffee because it's too early in the morning. So you see, I made my own coffee this morning. It's definitely a two to three coffee drive. We're talking two and a half, three hour drive down to this job site. That's the reason why we're leaving so early. In order to get something done, you gotta get up and go. That's just one of the things that you need to do if you're, uh, you're an operator or you're working for yourself. You don't want to stay at a hotel, or if you can stay at a hotel, you need to be home every night. You got to get up and go. Okay, we are fueled up and ready to go. I'll reset my trip actually just because, you know, why not? And we'll see what we get for mileage going down there. It says I've got 925 kilometers to empty. And I can say I drove this thing pretty hard coming home yesterday. So if it got that good, you know, of mileage estimating while I was coming home yesterday, I think we're doing pretty good. So in my recent video, it was the one where the, the emissions issues, the, the def tank and the wiring. And uh, during that video, I was driving back this long woods road with nothing around saying, sometimes I don't get the right coordinates. Well, that was yesterday, and yeah, I did not have the right coordinates. I was given the wrong coordinates, and I drove 45 minutes too far and outside of where I should be. So 45 minutes, turn around, go back 45 minutes. I lost an hour and a half yesterday just by that. And yesterday, I still left early. I still left at... Um, Oh, I got up at 5.15 and got geared around and, and left, same, same thing I did this morning, but I had the machine on back, and uh, I just, it just wasn't early enough, and then with that mess up, I just didn't have enough time to get a really super long, productive day in, and get home and spend time with, with the family. You know, I got home, my wife wasn't feeling the best, so, you know, got some food in me, played with Bauer, um, got him up, bath, she got him ready for bed, I put him to bed and then I edited that video. And then it was, you know, time to go to bed and get up at quarter to four in the morning. So that was yesterday, today, we're, we got an earlier start, we're way more ahead of the game. It's 4.30, I wasn't even up yesterday at that point. So let's go, let's go. We got no trailer, nobody's on the road really, we can make some good time, get there, get her done and get on to the next one most mornings are worried about the sun being in your eyes right now i'm worried about the moon being in my eyes man that thing is bright it's like a huge street light right now that is so bright like it's actually hard to look at yeah if it's not the sun in your eyes it's the moon all right six o'clock we've reached we've uh, reached <laughs> We've reached a Tim Hortons that is open. We need coffee number three. Maybe some breakfast. Good morning, can I take your order? Yeah, I'll get a large coffee with two milk and a bacon and egg on a biscuit. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. 
Alright guys, so I don't know how much you guys can see, but we're coming into Digby, and I've never came into Digby this time in the morning. It's absolutely beautiful over there. I, I hope you guys can see. I can't zoom in. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Digby is a is a really, 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 you know, picturesque and scenic place. Obviously known for their Digby scallops, but this is like a hidden gem, I think, of, of Nova Scotia. There's not a huge amount of people that live that live down here, and it is beautiful. It is beautiful. Real estate is, you know, and property is, is reasonably priced. I think it's just a matter of time before it, it goes crazy down here. And then we've got this crazy bridge down here that scares the crap out of me every time I go across it. Because it's like right on a hairpin turn and then you get into the bridge. But check it out. Alright, so we left. Well, I got up. Quarter to four in the morning. It's now seven. So, over three hours from the time I got up to the time I arrive on site. Look at that beautiful beast. Alright, now let's fire up the four ton. Ooh, no, 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 no. No copyright. Oh baby, oh baby, idle down a little bit, take the like automatic idle down feature off. Let's get a little heat pumping in here. Get her on the windshield. Wipers, wipers, where are you? Wipers, wipers. Still haven't cleaned this thing yet. I need to clean this thing. All right, let's close this up. Now, so what I need to do, I just greased this machine uh, last week. So everything's been greased, you know, every 50 hours I go through, I hit it with the grease gun. I've got my grease gun locked in here. My chains made it through the night, as I can see. My grease gun is locked in there. It's a just a cheap one for Princess Auto. Battery operated, but man, does it ever make a difference. So every eight hours, there's two grease nipples on the mulcher you gotta hit, and then every four or 40 hours, there's a grease nipple. So I'm at the eight hour mark for the two grease nipples, so I gotta grease the machine, finish this site off. Um, I'm gonna put some fuel in this once I get the guy anchors done and I'm starting to come out the road. So we've got this guy anchor here, not bad. As you can see on the left-hand side, there's not a whole lot. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna take this corner off over to this ugly birch tree, clean this area up, and then back here, you know, we got the same thing. We've already got the fenced compound cleaned out. So back here, same thing, you know, down the left side's not too bad, in the back's not too bad. Clean this stuff up going in there. The guy anchors on this site were not bad. The road, well, that was a complete different story. The road was absolutely terrible. You'd have a hard time driving a bicycle back through here. So again, left-hand side seems to be a theme. Um, not a lot. On right-hand side, yes. So this is, a, this is a perfect case where I can't reach over and get underneath the, the power line. So I'll have to make a separate pass through there to get the power line, but I'm going to take you out and show you the road and show you the difference from one side to the other. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the roosters, <laughs> the roosters are saying good morning. So you can see, so this side is done, this side is not. This is actually the wheel tracks for a vehicle. So do you think there's a chance that I would have brought my truck in here without getting this side done first? The only way I can get in here is to do one side and then <laughs> Get the machine, I mean, get the truck in, unload the trailer so I can drive in. Because, man, the, the, the tire tracks are literally 
literary, 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 literary. I can't even talk. Man, I can't even talk. Um, right through here, like look. That's how bad it was on this side too. Here's the tire track. So you had two feet, two and a half feet before it was all closed in. <laughs> Can you guys hear that? Anyway, we've got some work to do. So we got this side of the road to do. We've got some sections here underneath the power line that I wasn't able to reach. And the guy lines and then get home at a decent hour because you know by the time we get this done and then we load the machine on and get out of here and get home it's gonna be three and a half hours so if I even get this done by two o'clock and that might be doing good I'm still not home till 5 30 6 o'clock typical typical day and then of course if you're working out in the middle of nowhere like this is you got to have your lunch packed you got to have extra clothes packed you you've got to have all kinds of stuff ready water ready um, and then of course you need the absolute most, most important thing which is right there and then the truck of course is full of tools full of everything that you think you may need because you're not exactly just running down to the store to grab something you're not running down to grab lunch, you got your lunch packed, you know. You gotta have a lot of things ready to go because if something happens, you need it. You need it with you. You need it with you. It's not like just working downtown somewhere. All right, more minutes, warm this thing up, get the, get the head grease in the two spots I was talking about, and then it's time to make some noise. Okay, guys, we, uh, we killed it. We did good. We did good. 11:19. We are done. Getting ready to get out of here. So, what I like to do is when I'm loading on my excavator, I like to put the air in my airbags first. Cuz I would assume makes make make sense to me that it's much easier on the compressor if I put the air in my bags that I need with the load on before I put the load on. You know, it's like doing push-ups with weight on your back. You can do them a lot easier without the weight in your back. So why not get the air in there first? Now I always do run with some air in my bags just because with the leveling kit, a little bit of air in the bags makes the truck look better. I find with these new 2020s especially, with the uh, two and a half inch in the front, you can get a little Cali lean going on if you don't have anything in the back. Now there's a fix for that. You can get a larger block, which I'm definitely going to get down the road. So I'm putting the air in the bags. I got my compressor mounted under the seat. Right there. Which I have showed you guys before, but I'm just reiterating all this and might have some new people watching. I do that because these compressors get a lot of condensation and they crap out in the climates that we have here. Climates, climate, whatever. So I'll take you around and show you while that air is up. We got to get the excavator loaded on, get the tracks cleaned off first, get all the, the brush and leaves and stuff cleaned off there. But yeah, we did, we did good here. We did good here. I was thinking probably be here till two o'clock which would get me home between five and six. But if I'm able to leave here by 12, which I should be next 40 minutes, depends on how much I talk to you guys, I should be able to get home by three to 3.30. And while I was um, working, I got two phone calls for people looking to get a quote on some work. So I'm gonna stop and quote some work. One job probably on the way home now, I have time today. So here we got, this line is cleared. Obviously this line is cleared. I'll show you guys the road on the way out because I don't want to walk down there, and burn up more time. That line's all cleared out. And then this line over here, there wasn't much to this one. It was right next to the road. Now you can see that line's cleared. You can see the truck now is sitting. There is absolutely nothing 
within 15 to 20 feet on each side of the truck that's going to touch the truck. That's the way I like it. So, tracks cleaned off, machine on trailer, chained down, and we are out of here. Okay, so excavator loaded, check. So I always like to take a one last little walk around to make sure all my, everything on the trailer connections are good, my hitch connection's good. If you guys notice that the last couple of videos I haven't had my Gen Y hitch hooked up, well, <laughs> another problem with, you know, being a contractor, <laughs> I, um, I had it hooked up and I drove an hour over to the homestead to pick up the machine in the trailer. And I got there, and my hitch itself was still there, but someone t pulled out the shank with the 2 and 5 16 ball and the 2 inch ball, thinking that they were gonna, you know, get a nice heavy duty shank. Well, the problem is the pin is back too far on these connections. The shank's too short that it won't work on just a normal, normal hookup. So, unless he has a Gen Y hitch and he lost one, which I highly doubt that's the case. Yeah, it's no good to him anyway. So I always like to take one last walk around, make sure my straps are all good, everything's nice and tight. And, you know, she's good, she's ready to go. Oh, okay, see, now look, now look. Here's something that happened while I was tightening this down. I, I felt it, you know, move, and then it pulled tight again. Take a look at this. That's exactly why you do a walk around after you chain down your machine. That is no good, that is no good. You know what, that might stay like that. I am not risking it. And if a DOT guy's seen that, yeah, not so good. So I'm gonna have to redo this chain, which is a bummer. And then I'm gonna have a bite to eat. The truck's sitting nice and pretty with the, with the air and the airbags. I'm gonna have a bite to eat and I forgot to take my lunch out of here and put on the back of the truck to heat up my soup. Cause I've got soup with some scrambled eggs in there and I forgot to take that out and heat that up. If I have like some sort of sandwich or pizza or something I want to heat up, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put it in tin foil and I'll put it on top of the intake manifold. But, okay, redo that chain, have a bite to eat and then I'll show you guys the road on the way out of here. Um, something else I wanted to mention, you know, you guys see me do this stuff and that's that's all you see me do. Well, a lot of my work is done on these things right here, unfortunately. I'm not a computer person, I don't really like tech, um, but I have to deal with these things. One of these phones is for one of my clients and it's their basically their direct line to me. It is for them. That phone is designated to them. The other phone is my business phone and my personal phone. So right now, today for instance, I have myself here with this machine. My eight ton is in New Brunswick and my operators are actually switching out today. So one guy picked up the FJ this morning and he's going up to New Brunswick and swapping out for the other guy. We soon have New Brunswick done. And then my other 350, so that's the 550, the gooseneck, the eight ton. And then my 19350 is with my Big Tech's dump trailer and my two guys, they went up and did a roof job and now they're doing a bunch of minor repairs and weeding and stuff from inside of compounds and whatnot. So those two crews, those two trucks, the 550 and the 350 are in New Brunswick. And then I have work going on over in Newfoundland. So I have uh, brush removal work going on. I have contractors over there that I rely on that I subcontract that out but I do have a crew myself over in Newfoundland doing brush removal. So it's busy, it certainly is busy. Uh, my phone goes off all day, so I could be running the machine, everything could be going great, and then I could get a phone call and I need to shut the machine down and figure stuff out, get stuff done. You know, I could be on the phone for an hour, two hours, or 
whatever or just it rings 15 times a day and I got to answer it every time like I got I got a call today from from a client and I got two calls from potential clients uh, looking to get some work done so you got to shut things down turn the machine off get out of the machine walk around talk on the phone for a minute so you guys see me do this stuff but you guys don't see me do that stuff it's not exciting at all you don't want to see me do it I'd rather have someone do it for me to be honest than me just do this but that's just not in the not in the plans as of right now but anyway I'll show you guys the road and the way out and then uh, we'll get on the road I'll sh you know I'll, I'll record a bit of that and then probably record some of um, when I'm going to do this do this job and then when I get home if I get home in time I've got to change the oil in this thing and I've got to flip the teeth around because the teeth are on their last legs that's about it for for the equipment and then there's home stuff so yeah I'm gonna get this done quick hopefully I know you guys are probably saying bro did you just say that you're eating um, soup with scrambled eggs yeah <laughs> Yes, I did. It was uh, chickpea soup with pieces of ham in it. And yes, yeah, scrambled eggs that my wife had cooked last night, that Ashley had cooked last night. And you know what? When you leave at 4 o'clock in the morning for work and you work in the middle of nowhere, you just kind of eat what you eat or you don't. Some days I just choose not to. But. Anyway, so here is the road going out. And if you remember what it looked like before, on this side of the road, where our tire tracks are right now, we had brush beating against us. Well, we don't have that anymore. We've got lots and lots and lots of clearance on both sides of the truck. Much better. They're, they will certainly be happy with this. Okay, guys, so quick check-in. This thing's getting fantastic mileage. So 37, 12, 50, 20 tires on this thing. We've driven 150 miles with 15,000 pounds behind us basically. 11.6 MPG. 11.6 MPG, that's really, really good. Sorry, I got the sunroof open and the window open. We're just above home. It's only 247, so you know, you would think, early work day, early work day, it's only 3 o'clock, you're going to be getting home. Well, <laughs> not really that early considering you, I started at, well, I got up at 3, 345, so basically I'm looking at a 12 hour day right now, I've pretty much worked a 12 hour day so far. But I'd much rather do that and get home at a decent hour than get up at 7 and get home at 7 or 8. That's no good at all. That's no good at all. I'm willing to get up at 3.45, 4 o'clock, whatever I got to do to get home at a decent hour. Alright guys, we're home. So here is a real world situation and a downfall if you're running your business out of your house. Bauer is upstairs sleeping. His bedroom window is right there. The dogs are probably in the garage, but if I pull up here and get turned around and park where I want to park, chances are the dogs are going to hear me, they're going to bark, potentially wake him up. And <laughs> you don't want to wake up a baby that's almost a year old in his afternoon nap. You don't want to do that. You want to keep his routine, keep his routine as much as you possibly can. So, with that said, um, I was gonna back the trailer in there and check the air in the tires and put air in the tires on the trailer if I needed to and then start working on the oil change and flipping the teeth around but I don't want to make too much noise and set the dogs off which will in turn wake him up so I'll have to wait and probably have to wait till he goes to bed and it'll be quite dark out here but so I'm gonna go in grab a shower um, work on some invoicing because it's the end of the month so I do my invoicing typically at the end of the month unless there's something that has to be sent out urgently then I'll send it out through the month but most of the time it's it's at the end of the month it's gonna go in and get a shower I need a coffee <laughs> so I'll get my coffee number four for the day and start working on some paperwork invoicing and stuff 
have some family time and then come back out here and finish off the day in the dark. That's the way she goes. Okay guys, so Bauer is just going to bed. That's why I'm talking pretty low. Beautiful night out here. Just starting to actually edit this video, but I've got to jump over here to the other laptop and do some invoicing for the month. So I've got a stack of papers here that is all subcontract stuff that I need to input and bill. <sighs> and then um, now it's time to go out, change the oil in the excavator, and rotate the teeth, and then come back in, finish off the invoicing, finish editing the video, and get it up. Don't excuse, like, excuse this. This is like our work center <laughs> here. It's never clean. My wife's gonna hate that I show this in the video. Okay guys, so that is it. The oil change is done. The teeth are flipped. Brand new set of teeth ready to go. Oil change, good to go for a while. It's dark. I have one thing left to do. Two things left to do. I still gotta get all that invoicing inputted into the computer. And I gotta go out and shut my garden hose off. <laughs> and then probably around 10.30, 11 o'clock, time to go to bed. And the alarm is set for four. I might hit this news button a couple times tomorrow. We'll see. But that's a day in the life of, of what, I, what I do, you know, on a fairly typical day. Might not be, you know, as long. I don't change the oil every day. I don't rotate teeth every day. I don't get up at 3.45 every day. But if I need to, then, you know, that's what I do. You need to make your, your time valuable. This time of year is crazy for me. It's wide open for me. My winters can be a bit slower, so I need to go wide open while I can to get me through those, those you know, slower months. Now with that said, my phone could ring any time right now and I could have to go jump in the truck and who knows, could have to drive for three or four hours to get to a site and do an emergency job. We just don't know. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Gives you a little insight into, you know, what it's like for me and what it can be like to be, you know, in business with yourself. There's not a whole lot of downtime. If you're, if you want to be successful, you gotta go, 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 go. Don't say no, just go. Anyway, for now guys, that's it. Take care, stay safe, get some sleep, and we'll see you next time. Bye.